Hi, I'm Terry Locke. Welcome to Kindergarten Live. School starts on July 23rd in the Chandler Unified School District. That's two weeks from tomorrow. So we wanted to reach out to the parents of our newest kindergartners to see if you have any questions or concerns as we near the start of the school year. Joining me here today is a panel of experts made up of four of our district's wonderful kindergarten teachers. To my left, Ashley Ellenwood from Hancock Elementary. Next is Joanne Nelson from CTA Freedom, Leticia Paris from Fulton Elementary, and Tabitha Hickey from Hartford Sylvia and Cenas. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Thanks for having us. I guess it's noon now, isn't it? Ashley, tell us a lot about your background, would you? I was born and raised here in Chandler, Arizona, so I went through the Chandler Unified School District, and I have been teaching at Hancock Elementary. This will be my 10th year teaching kindergarten. Glad to have you. Okay. Joanne. I'm originally from California. This is my 15th year teaching, my third year with CUSD, and I teach at CTA Freedom. Thank you for joining us, Joanne. Absolutely. Leticia Paris, tell us about uh, your background. Well, I'm also from Arizona, and I'm my 20th year of teaching. Um, I taught some first grade, but primarily kindergarten. And Tabitha Hickey from Hartford Sylvia Encinas. Yes, this is my fourth year at Hartford Sylvia Encinas Elementary, and I love kindergarten. Um, I grew up here in Arizona as well, in small towns, and I'm just excited to do what I love, be in kindergarten. Well, we're excited to have all of you here today. I want to encourage the public, parents of uh, five-year-olds, to send in your questions on Facebook Live, and we're going to try and get to those today as well. So we're going to incorporate those questions as they come in as well. But I'm going to start off with kind of a basic. What does a typical kindergarten day look like? Joanne Nelson, let's start with you. Well, a typical day in kindergarten starts with a warm welcome. We are so excited to have your kids in our class, and we love what we do. Um, we'll get, help get the kids settled, everything from putting their backpacks away to finding their seat, and usually start off with some type of morning meeting. Um, we'll introduce reading, um, some writing, certainly phonics, we'll have math. There's an um, important part of the day is definitely recess and snack time mm -hmm. and allowing the kids to have their social time and definitely play. Anything yeah, and like don't forget about the specials class. They get Absolutely. to go to a variety of different classes. We have awesome specials teachers. The PE teachers are really great about getting all that movement going, teaching them rules of games, mm -hmm. and just letting them have so much fun. And then they get to go to music with, um, you know, really great music teachers who teach them new songs. They always come in singing or with something that they've learned. Our librarians have really do a really great job exposing them to all the literature that we might not get to use in our classrooms. And they also use thinking maps like we do and, and really um, back up all that learning that we're doing with our reading groups. And then they have technology class, which the kids love. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing in kindergarten to see what they do. Our technology teachers have them logging in all by themselves. It's really amazing to see all that. Yeah. Even during the year, they have an hour of code that they participate in as well. Yeah. This is not your grandfather's kindergarten. Is no. <laughs> this is, <laughs> yes, old. this is the new kindergarten that has so much more so than what, much. <laughs> what it started as. Yeah. And you're incorporating a lot, but you mentioned recess. There's two recesses a day, is that correct? Yes, so they'll it, have a lunch recess and then another recess throughout the day that they'll get to go out and play with their friends, learn new games, um, they have snack at recess. Yeah. Yeah. And on those good. high heat days, we make sure that they have an indoor recess where they're still okay. having that gross motor movement in between good. their academic learning. Yeah, we know, that the, them too. we know that the play is so important in kindergarten too. So when they get to be social and play with their friends, that's a whole other part of learning that they're doing in kindergarten. So my child might be five years old, but Leticia, how do I know that my what, what does my child need to know before they start that first day? Well, I think personally, I would work on assisting them with those goodbyes that can become a little bit stressful and emotional. Um, we really take care of the rest. The most that you can help your child with are those independent skills that help them when they're with a classroom of learners. It's really helpful when they're able to manage their personal belongings. Or, and that includes their lunch items and opening and closing and zippers and, and helping them with um, the bathroom skills that um, are important and helpful to us as teachers. Anything to add to that? I think it's important too that they 
um, realize, yes, we're going to teach them all these things. So if they're nervous about it, they don't know how to do much, or maybe at home, you, we don't want any late night summer cramming of, of <laughs> skills. We're going to do all of that and they will be just fine. It's just mostly saying, being encouraging and, and sure. positive about everything they're going to do. Put a pencil in their hand every now and then, read them a book, all of those kind of things will help. Very good. Mm -hmm. Ashley, uh, what will teachers be focusing on during those first couple of weeks? So some of these students are coming to a school for the first time. Yeah. So what's important on July 23rd through that first week of August? Yeah, well, on the first day of school, you'll be able to bring your child in, and we want you just to be positive with your child, let them know that you're excited for them to come to kindergarten, just like we're excited to have them in our classroom. Um, and if you could just give them a quick hug, uh, you know, a goodbye, and then let them go in and start building their relationship with their teacher. And we know as parents that you're going to be sad once you let them go in that classroom, but just don't let them see that because then they'll be ready <laughs> to um, start their day in a positive way. Right. We like to include a lot of activities that get them familiar with not only the classroom, but also the school. So we take tours and, and we meet the lunch workers and our paraprofessionals, our health office, our office staff, and our custodians as well. Yeah. We want them to become part of our school community. We also want them to feel confident that, you know, not only can they trust the teacher, but the principals there, the everyone that's working in the office, um, all the other teachers, like everybody's there to kind of help us along, especially in kindergarten. We love that the school is there to help us. Yeah. Even the big kids are there to help us out. We become a little family. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, family. yeah. Wonderful. So Tabitha, where, where do the kids eat lunch? Where do the kindergartners eat lunch? Well, we have a fabulous cafeteria for our, <laughs> our kids to eat lunch in, and um, that is just a big experience for them in kindergarten. They love walking in and having that choice of the hot lunch or a sandwich. They get to choose their milk or juice. I mean, these are um, things that don't seem very exciting, but to them, their okay. first day in there, it, it is a lot of fun, and they get to pick out everything they want. And then when they sit down, you know, it is a, a little bit of a learning um, curve there with opening everything by themselves, um, but they really they really catch on quick and they eat that lunch and they're, they're yummy lunches. They, we never have them complain. And um, also, I know one thing we were talking about earlier is don't be afraid if they if you packed a lunch and something came home not eaten. They just have to learn how to use their time correctly and actually eat the food instead of talking or just looking around and being in awe of where they're at. <laughs> I imagine that first day is a little intimidating. Any, any difficulty with the lunch, like opening or anything? That, yeah. that... Well, we, we have helpers that will be okay. in the lunchroom to help them yeah. with anything they need. If they forgot their napkin or their fork, they are willing to help them get anything they need or open different items. Uh, they become and, experts with the milk carton. Yeah. By the end of the year. yeah. I can use help with milk cartons once in a while. <laughs> I do want to share that we do have a special table set aside for children that have certain food allergies mm. and parents don't want them to um, have any cross contamination. Oh, so that's smart. that shouldn't be a concern. That's for good to know. Yeah, it should, should be a stressful lunch. Right. And speaking yeah. on that, I mean, it's very important that that those type of things are communicated to the teacher and then we can communicate them to the lunchroom as well mm -hmm. so that they know not to be served certain things. And the health office. Health, health office, office, yes. Yeah. Now the students coming come to school, they're, they're potty trained, but obviously yeah. once in a while a five-year-old could have an accident. What, what, Ashley, what do we do when that happens? Yeah, well, it does happen and that's okay. We're okay with that. So the best thing to do is to pack a little bag of just a backup pair of clothes for your child. Mm -hmm. We will uh, send them to the health office and the health assistant can help them get changed and send them right back to class. That way they're not missing very much instructional time mm -hmm. and they can jump right back in without anyone even noticing. Right. And we have really great health assistants. Our school nurses are awesome. They make all of those accidents um, very seamless and they really help us out. So I, don't, I think parents should know that there's always going to be somebody there to help them out. And sometimes it's not just the restroom. We were talking about muddy days or if they get painting wet days. or painting yeah. or anything else mm -hmm. like that that might happen. Um, they're there to help us out. So what does homework look like for a kindergarten student, <laughs> Leticia? It is different with each school site and each classroom. Um, what we really like to encourage is that um, you have open communication with your child's teacher. Um, sometimes um, whatever's being provided can be too much and you can work with your um, child's teacher about reducing 
those task items, or if you'd like more enrichment for your child, that's also available through your child's teacher. Mostly in kindergarten, we really want to establish um, a routine. Your child has set aside some part of the day where they're reviewing some of the material, um, doing some activity that's really related to reading is so important, and um, just setting aside that time to create a habit of homework time, some focus time um, after school. What's that time look like at that age compared to a, a, a physics uh, class and, and when you're 17 or 18 <laughs> years old? What does it look like in kindergarten? Uh, maybe uh, the CUSD policy is about 15 minutes and maybe some nights you go a little bit longer, maybe some nights it doesn't take as long, but you can always use that time to read to your child. They're very excited. They're recognizing letters and eventually words. They grow like crazy. And um, we just always encourage you, if it is taking longer than that is, and, and your child is getting tired, just stay in communication with your child's teacher. And we want them to enjoy homework as much as possible. <laughs> um, and it shouldn't be a stressful, a stressful experience for either you or your child. Right, and I think it's important, just like she said, you know, establish, establish that routine where every night you might have a special place that you go to do your homework, or you're going to read a book with even a big brother or a big sister or somebody else at home, and then complete whatever the teacher has sent. So it's just important to check the folders every night, make sure you understand like what's required from the teacher, and um, you know, just make it a positive fun experience. Let's talk about supplies a little bit. So, you know, parents are excited to have their kids get off their right start and be prepared for everything they're going to need. And they also like to help out in classrooms with classroom supplies. So, what, uh, Ashley, what, what do you advise to parents on July 9th or July 8th about uh, supplies before school starts on July 23rd? Well, CUSD does a great job of giving our students supplies. Uh, we do request that you have a backpack. That's a good thing that you can check every single night. You can see what they've done throughout the day. Any communication you need to receive from the teacher or give to the teacher, you can stick it in their backpack so that we can always have that communication. Um, also at Meet the Teacher, which we encourage all of the families to come to to meet all of the wonderful kindergarten teachers, um, we will be letting you know what you'll need for your specific classroom because it will vary from school to school. but. Our school district does a great job of giving us a lot of supplies to work with. That's fantastic. Um, well, what kind of discipline could a five-year-old, I mean, you know, there's still a work in progress at five years old. What does discipline look like at the uh, kindergarten level? I'll start with you, Joanne. Positive praise, constant positive praise. <clears throat> Kids are always learning and they need to know that everybody's going to fail at different times and redirection in a positive manner is really what we find that goes such a long way. And um, if, if that's not working as well as we'd like it to, we can ask them to sit out and have some thinking time and really stay in contact with the parent to help that child grow. But positive praise is really going to be where we start and continue and end with. Good. Yeah, I just, go ahead, sorry. I, also allowing us to build that relationship with your child. Mm -hmm. Having a strong relationship with the child and the family goes a long way and really makes a difference in um, managing our classroom with all these different types of learners and getting to know what works with your child is the most important and that's really has mm -hmm. long-term benefits for us. And I was just going to say, going back to building the relationship, and then we also, you know, we build our own classroom culture and our classroom family, and so it becomes kind of the expectation of the classroom family how you're supposed to behave. And if you're not being part of our family in a positive way, then it might be something just as simple as, you know, giving them a reminder of what we expect them to do. Um, but, you know, it's like finding the root. Why are you doing this? What's going on? And then, you know, praising them for all the good things that they are doing. How many uh, students are typically in a kindergarten class? I'll start with you, Ashley, your school. Uh, we, the average across the district is about 23 students to one teacher. If we happen to go above 26 students in a classroom, we get a paraprofessional that will come in and assist with mm -hmm. at the, helping out with the students, helping the teacher. Um, and we have had such great paraprofessionals throughout the district that are just so helpful and willing to do anything they need to do to help the students succeed. Is it safe to say sometimes teachers maybe say, hope you get to 26 and get that extra help in the classroom? <laughs> yeah, right I think on the so. Bubble. I need yeah. one more kid. We, we want all of the help. kindergartners to get yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, 
Now, what parents want to help, but one thing we're proud of in Chandler Unified is we have a great relationship with our community. They want to help you as teachers. What, what can they do? Tabitha? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can help the teacher, and we understand that you're not able to come in maybe every day during the week or even a few days because you have to work, um, but there might be a variety of other ways that we could use your help by doing something at home or um, you know, planning ahead and coming with us on field trips or different school events that we need extra hands on deck. So there's just a, a variety of ways that you can still be part of your child's learning and volunteering. So the most important thing is just to ask, ask the teacher, ask the school office, and see if there's any way that um, might be available to you. I've got a question submitted on Facebook Live. Uh, C.G. Youngdahl asks, what is the KIST testing we signed up for, the K-I-S-T test? What is that? What's that all about? Okay. Uh, Leticia, you want to start? It is an assessment that we give um, each student simply because we don't have a lot of information on the academic skills of a kindergartner um, that's very different than a first, third grade teacher that has other teachers to speak about um, that student academically. And so we try to establish some baseline data about each child and it helps us to, it gives us a starting point for each child on where they are in their learning. It also helps us to create balanced classrooms with different abilities of learners in each classroom. Is it a pass-fail, actually? I mean... No, absolutely no. not. <laughs> we, um, just like she was saying, we just get a little baseline score on them just so mm -hmm. we can see where they are and how we can help them when they come into our classroom. You share that information with parents so they can kind of have an idea of, of where you are as a teacher and you want your child to be successful. Is, is the KISS, is it shared at all or does it just really help you more internally? It's really more just for us. If a parent um, asks us, do you see anything my child can work on, we might mention something. But no, in general, it's just for our use to help build our classrooms and to help know where to start with the kids and where, what they might need the most. Okay. Got a question submitted on Facebook Live from Shyla Hathaway. She says, when is teacher, meet the teacher night? She says, a <laughs> lot of people are asking. So tell us at your school, uh, beginning with Tabitha, and we'll go, we'll go right to left. We'll do this like we're uh, Japanese Japan. style. When is your uh, Meet the Teacher Night? Yes, yeah, so our Meet the Teacher Night is, it might be different for different age levels, but um, at Hartford, Sylvia and Sinus, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe our Meet the Teacher is July 18th. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it and you know, you'll just have to check on the times for each school. Sure. But it's a very important night whenever you find out when it is to just make sure that you come with your student. And it's a really fun time for them to kind of explore the classroom, see where they're going to be mm -hmm. coming, see where they're going to line up, um, you know, meet their teacher, see them face to face. And that kind of eases those nerves and makes it a little bit more mm -hmm. um, exciting to look forward mm -hmm. to that first yes. day of school. If also, it's a great time to answer questions with parents. Yes. Yeah. So. If you go on your school website, it should be on the calendar on there, and you can find any information you need for that night. Our and elementary school, go ahead. I was going to say, it's, it's fun for us also to meet our students. You know, we get our roster, but it's, it's exciting to meet them. It's exciting to meet their families, and their joy is our joy as well. It really so. does help with the nerves. It's for, oh, for sure. Probably <laughs> more for the parents. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, for all those watching, uh, elementary office is open tomorrow, Tuesday, July 9th. So any questions you have about Meet the Teacher or anything else, but uh, touch base with your local school for the specific time on Meet the Teacher. But it's an extremely important night as well. Um, I need daycare for my child. K kindergarten class doesn't last all day. What, what options do we have, Ashley? Well, we offer a program called Kids Express, and that is before and after school care. Uh, you can find it on the CUSD website under Community Ed, and it offers all kinds of great activities for the students. They have time to finish up their homework and work on different th tasks and projects that they need to complete at Kids Express. Mm -hmm. What else do your students do there? They, Kids Express is really great about having kids move. They are constantly playing games. They're constantly interacting with each other. Um, it's a very positive, positive um, place for them just, just to play after school. And But there is that homework component, too, where they, where they can complete their homework as well. Right. Probably helps the parents, too, when they yeah. get home. Yeah. They don't worry about that. They homework. try to make sure it's not an extension of the school day. Yeah, yeah. It's something it's completely different. Mm -hmm. Teachers utilize them. Our children use Kids Express mm -hmm. as well. Is the discipline the same if my kid acts up after school on the same property? Is it similar to if they acted up in the classroom? I mean, it would be something similar. There's definitely um, going to be some behavior requirements, but, um, you know, it's also 
an understood thing that they've already done an entire school day of sitting and listening and learning. So they might be a little bit more, um, you know, what's going on? What else can I do to have them be um, still having fun, but maybe behaving in a better way? One of our viewers, uh, Nikela Sastry, I hope I got your name pronounced right. Do kindergartners walk to the restroom by themselves, Leticia? They do not. They do not. They do so not. What's the, what happens when a child needs to go to the restroom? Well, we do scheduled bathroom breaks as a class, um, but when a child does need to go to the bathroom outside of those scheduled times, they are always with a buddy. We use a buddy system for any time they're walking around on campus and um, in the beginning of the year, we have lots of paraprofessionals that are our helpers to also assist with that. Consistent mm -hmm. help with schools. Yes. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Parkins asks, uh, when do we find out our teacher assignments? Everybody's excited they to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When do we find out? What's the routine? Well, I think that's another thing, it, depending on, um, you know, your school site. And when you get that information in the mail, you'll get a, a packet in the mail or an envelope in the mail that yeah. will explain to you a little bit about um, kindergarten and when the meet the teacher is and who the teacher is and you'll have all that information so that when you show up when you show up for meet the teacher then if you have any other questions that weren't answered on the papers then you can ask us during that time and, okay. and my school at Fulton utilizes email yes mm -hmm. so yeah. we'll send an e-blast to anyone who is registered um, their kindergarten student and they'll get that a welcome email from their actual teacher. I'm glad you mentioned that. Communication is an important part of what we do, including even when we occasionally have a neighborhood crisis where we need to go into lockdown. Can't stress enough the importance of making sure you have accurate and current uh, contact information. So yes. for fun little things like meet the teacher night, but also for ongoing communication. So yeah. parents, if you're, uh, make sure your information is current. So Now Jackie asks us, what type of snacks do they eat in class? Joanne? I think it'll vary from school to school. At our school, we have students bring in snack once a month and then they share, they distribute it throughout, which is one of their favorite things to do to be the snack monitor and pass out the snack. And then students with allergies, we either have extra snacks on hand or they can bring their snack from home. Okay. So at, your schools? Yeah, at Hartford, Sylvia and Cenas, we also are very lucky to have a um, program with fresh fruit and vegetables. And so we will receive those from the cafeteria that we will save for our afternoon snack time. We also have anything that was um, prepackaged for breakfast that we might let the students save and eat later on in the, in the day for their snack time as well. Good, thank you. Uh, Kelly Doyle writes in, uh, where do I find school supply lists? Ashley? That should be coming with your, well, you can learn about it at Meet the Teacher, or it will be coming with your packet or your email from your front office or your teacher will be sending you an email, and it should have the whole list of everything that you can bring to help with the first day of school. And in our case at Fulton, we've already posted a general supply list that's specific to each grade level. Then if teachers have additional items that they're requesting, or would wish for, mm -hmm. um, they'll f find that out at Meet the Teacher as well. Are these things like tissues and things right. of that nature? Basically? Tissues, Clean hand sanitizer, lights, things like that. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a really Blue good sticks. idea to just ask at Meet the Teacher, what is the most, what, what is something that you really want us to bring? And then, you know, we'll have a better idea of yeah. something that we need. So five-year-olds ride buses to school. <laughs> um, probably for the first time ever on July 23rd for some of them. Um, what, uh, what's the, what do you recommend for the course of the first day and so forth? Do we let ki kids get off the bus by themselves? Um, Tab, I'll start with you. Well, they, they cannot get off the bus by themselves. They have to have an adult at the pickup spot. So, and that has to be something set up, you know, in ahead of time. If you're going to put your child on the bus, it's really important that you make sure that there is an, an adult at the bus stop every time that the student is going to get off the bus. Um, on our side, we make sure that, you know, the the kindergartners are escorted to the bus and actually get on the bus, the correct bus at school. The, bus. the correct bus at school. And then, you know, once they're on the school bus, the bus drivers do an awesome job of knowing where they're supposed to stop and what, what parent, what adult they're looking for. So that first day of school, that's a little unnerving for, a mom, especially if it's your first child. You haven't gone through this before. So any, any tips for getting that first day, Ashley? Yeah, we suggest that you put your child on the bus for the first day of school, then you can 
head to the school to meet them, to help them get off and show them where their classroom is. That way they'll already be in the routine for the rest of the yeah. year. They'll know exactly what to do every single day. Um, they'll also get bus tags. I don't know if you mentioned that, but that way we, anyone at the school will know which bus they are supposed to go on so they never get lost or get in the wrong line. We always keep an eye on them. And the kindergartners actually get to sit in the first couple of rows on the bus. And that way they don't get mixed up. We can always, we know where everyone is all the time and safety is very key with these kindergartners, making Absolutely. sure that they're safe getting to and from school every day. That's right, just, and just follow the bus like I did when I put my child on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very good, yeah. shoot. Uh, Lindsay Gonzalez says they're gonna be out of town for the Meet the Teacher on uh, what, July 18th. Is there another way that, another time they can come or get that information from you? What do you recommend to, to Lindsay? I recommend contacting the child's teacher and they can set up um, a different time where the child can come in when that teacher's on campus just to come into the classroom and be able to meet and answer any of those questions. Absolutely. Same here, I would mm -hmm. say definitely call the teacher and just say, hey, can I stop by? Can I pick up anything that we missed? Or can I bring the student in to see the classroom really quickly? Mm -hmm. And will be willing to do that. Good. Yeah. So school offices open up tomorrow, July 9th. We're returning teachers report back on July 16th, I believe, right? The yeah. Tuesday? Yes. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind if you're emailing your, your, your uh, teacher. They may not get it until next week, but yeah. uh, that's important as well. Uh, Tammy G Gittle says, does the special needs classroom at CTA Freedom have different uniform requirements? And boy, we have the perfect CTA Freedom <laughs> person. Joanne is gonna answer that question. <laughs> Well, unless it's changed from last year, no. Um, they, there is no uniform for the preschool and, you know, the K-1, I am actually not sure, so I maybe not be the perfect person for that. It is a new program at our school. Oh, okay. So, the Very K-1 good. classroom. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so the uh, school begins on July 23rd. At the end of the year, so at the end of May next year, I mean, what... What can we expect? What kind of development can we expect from that child? Oh my God. Um, yeah. what, what are they hoping for? They walk in wide-eyed oh, on July 23rd. And they're gonna leave here on May, I don't remember the last day of school, May 30th, let's say. Um, what, what, transform, what transformation happens in that time? Huge transformation. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what Everything. doesn't? What yeah. doesn't change? Said. <laughs> Everything from behavior and becoming more independent in all activities, mm -hmm. everything from knowing the routine, and they start from needing you to show them every single part of everything to being able to teach new students who might be coming in, mm -hmm. um, the being coming in maybe not knowing letters to even reading, yeah. not knowing how to write their name to writing multiple sentences, adding, subtracting, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think beautiful. that's why kindergarten is my favorite my because favorite. they come in and they, you know, are so, like you said, wide-eyed and kind of, you know, starstruck. What, what am I doing here? And they, we are just tracking that growth and progress all year long and they are just learning so much. I mean, it's even amazing as their teacher to say like, Wow, I mean, they have just learned so much this school year. Not only do they grow after Christmas, <laughs> yes, you, yes. you come back to your class after Christmas and you say, wow, everybody is bigger and taller and maybe starting to get wiggly teeth. Right. So they change in their appearance, <laughs> but they also are just, they become more independent and just better all around mm -hmm. students. And um, it's just an amazing Does it help their social skills, Leticia? I mean, that first year of being in, in many cases, first year being in class, uh, social skills grow as well? Absolutely, I think that's why as kindergartners, it's such a privilege to be a part of the many milestones that occur in kindergarten yeah. with mm -hmm. these children. And yes, their social skills, um, they become more um, self-managed they have better self-control. They start to interact. We have a buddy system at our schools where they interact with the older grades mm -hmm. and children from older grade levels become a part of their learning community. And they start to really um, take ownership in their own learning, but also in their school and in building relationships with staff members as well as their peers. And we have a lot of leadership activities at the schools that they can be involved in, even in kindergarten. They can you know, get up on the stage at assemblies and mm -hmm. they can be a part of different clubs that perform or do different activities. So mm -hmm. they really do find that ownership in the school. Okay, very good. I have one more question coming in here, I believe. <laughs> coming in live. Just submitted 
from uh, Andrea Shirley. Do kids seat? F do they sit for long periods of time without moving? And is this different at, at a CTA, a neighborhood school, and so forth? What, what's the expectation for attention span? I think is what she's getting at here. <laughs> <laughs> It's they can't sit for very long <laughs> no, at first, no. and we know that, and we support that. So, they kids will learn to sit for longer periods of time, but initially it is it is quite a short period of time, and we do a lot of movement activities um, in between. We do go noodles, and um, mm -hmm. which is dancing, and it's it's that you can have academic little videos with it and non-academic and. Um, we very much recognize that kids need to move and that it's not in their best interest to keep them sitting after they can't sit any longer. Yeah. And we're mm -hmm. equipped to help them build stamina in Absolutely. their focus and attention and Correct. time on task. But imagine the exercise, just getting up and yeah. doing some jumping some jacks and whatever yeah. really Absolutely. probably helps get the brain energized. Yeah, that's it. another thing too. Like she said, building the stamina at the beginning of the year, we're, we're moving every couple of minutes <laughs> because we yeah. got to keep them on their toes. And then pretty soon, you know, they're sitting in that circle time with you and they're, um, you know, doing our daily routines and every day it just gets a little bit more and a little bit more. And pretty soon they can sit down with a book all by themselves and read to self. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of builds as the year goes on. Don't worry. We'll, we'll yeah, have them up and down. Yeah. We'll have it make yeah. It's going to be fun. They settle in and start to um, look for those procedures and routines mm -hmm. that we've mm -hmm. developed. Yeah. Absolutely. I've got a great follow-up question from uh, Azan Robena. What is the buddy system exactly, Tabitha? What does that mean? So the buddy system basically just means that they aren't going anywhere alone. They always take a friend with them. So if you know we're done doing a classroom bathroom break, for example, the whole class goes to the restroom, we come back. Now if they need to go again or something like that happens in between, then they won't. we won't ever send them off by themselves. We'll send them with a friend and together they can go find the restroom or together they can walk up to you know the health assistant or to the library or wherever they need to go. So it's just ensuring that they're not going to be alone. Good deal. Okay, any think of questions I didn't think to ask today? Hmm. You've know. been very thorough. <laughs> I think, I think you, so. Yeah. You, can, you can tell how excited our staff are to welcome probably about 2,800 kindergartners to our uh, 30 elementary schools this year, and we're just lucky to have such great uh, staff at our schools. Reminder to the public, the elementary schools will reopen tomorrow on July the 9th, and um, the secondary schools are open now. Returning teachers begin on Tuesday, uh, July 16th. Meet the teachers are typically going to be on the 18th and check with your school. And we're just really excited and hope everybody's got uh, really uh, July 23rd circle because we're really excited <laughs> for the first day of school. And uh, that's going to conclude our first edition of Kindergarten Live. Yay, thank, thank you all. Thank you.